In ancient times, many civilizations around the world were known as river valley civilizations as they progressed and grew on the availability and potential of water. Ancient India, which flourished around the banks of the river Indus, was acknowledged as the Indus Valley Civilization. Inland navigation played a big role in the growth of the nation, its sustenance and development while furthering the progress of mankind. Indian river banks and their tributaries facilitated trade and travel through waterways, thereby leading to the mushrooming of many ancient cities and industrial towns. Waterways were the lifeline for transportation of goods and passengers in the early 19th century, before the extensive rail and road network crisscrossed the length and breadth of the country, which made India a powerful global economic force. PM Gati Shikti National Master Plan Bharat ke isi atma bal ko atma viswas ko atma nirbharta ke sankalpa tak le jane wala hai Logistics costs in India are high accounting for 14% of the GDP while transportation and inventory costs account for more than 90% of these logistics costs PM Gati Shakti Yojana, aimed at addressing issues pertaining to infrastructure building, was launched by the Honorable Prime Minister in 2021. Inland waterways transport plays a vital role in facilitating reduction of logistics cost and making Indian goods competitive, and thus enabling the overall objective of PM Gati Shakti. Transportation cost per ton by roads is 1.8 times of that by inland waterways. Similarly, per ton kilometer emissions from waterway transport are nine times lower as compared to those from trucks, which could also contribute significantly towards India's target of being net zero by 2070. Waterways are one of the most affordable modes of transport as they use the natural water flows of rivers and canals, which does not require huge capital investment bringing down operating costs as it is fuel efficient. This mode is also environment friendly, reducing carbon footprint. Post-independence, India with a coastline of 7,516 kilometers became one of the largest shipping country in Asia and a leading one globally. But the prospect of further growth remained unutilized because the country had only 12 major ports those had extremely poor connectivity with the hinterland. The Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi realized the urgent need of development of waterways in India and its economic potential for transportation of goods and passengers from the remote corners of the country to major ports. He envisaged the potential of waterways in India and announced development of 111 waterways across the country in 2015. Ours is a government that is investing in waterways in a way that was never seen before. Domestic waterways are found to be cost-effective and environment-friendly way of transporting freight. We aim to operationalize 23 waterways by 2030. He prioritized the development of the National Waterway 1 on the river Ganga connecting holy city Baranasi with Kolkata and Haldia ports and link it further with the northeastern states via Indo-Bangladesh protocol route and waterways 2 and 16 on rivers Brahmaputra and Barak. The foundation stone of the multimodal terminal at Baranasi was laid on 12th August 2016 and was completed in just two years. That is an engineering feat. Trial run of two vessels were flagged off, which carried newly manufactured cars of Maruti Suzuki from Varanasi to Haldia, West Bengal. History was created in the post-independence India when cargo ship MV Rabindranath Tagore carrying 16 PepsiCo containers embarked on its first ever journey from Haldia on 30th October 2018 and reached Varanasi in nine days 
only to be received by Honorable Prime Minister himself on 12th November 2018. The National Waterway 1 or Ganga Bhagirathi Hooghly River system is 1,620 kilometers long and is the longest waterway in India. NW1 passes through the states of West Bengal, Jharkhand, Bihar and Uttar Pradesh and serves major cities and industrial corridors Haldia, Kolkata, Bhagalpur, Munger, Patna, Ghazipur, Varanasi and Prayagraj. The waterway has a much larger goal of connecting the entire northeastern states through Indo-Bangladesh protocol route, creating strategically an alternative route for unhindered movement of cargo. Bulk cargo like cement, iron ore, coal and fly ash, crude oil and petroleum products, rock phosphate, timber, stone chips, manganese ore, agricultural produce, finished iron products from steel plants find it easy to transport through the National Waterways 1, which is economically viable, less cumbersome and reduces load of the road and railways transport system. Cargo movement through waterways have witnessed remarkable growth in recent years, that is 18.8 million metric tons in 2013 to 108.76 million metric tons in 2021-22. अपने जलमार्ग के जरिए through waterways, if we could connect rest part of the country and also our neighboring nation, then it will be a greatest opportunities for our young entrepreneurs, producers, exporters, importers, all the business houses to explore this situation for the benefit of their own and as well as for the country. Since the inception of the navigation lock at Faraka on the river Ganges in 1978, this has successfully facilitated movement of vessels carrying goods and passengers on National Waterways 1. However, limited capacity, old technology, time-taking movement of vessels have restricted the increasing movement of ships, especially after NW1, an Indo-Bangladesh protocol route, has become operational. Jalamarga Vikas project has been working relentlessly for setting up a new navigational lock that would be equipped with state-of-the-art technology, loaded with features like electromechanical hydraulic automatic system, operations of mitre gates and radial gates and remote control operations of all the gates from a central control room, which will enable free movement of the vessels in increased numbers. This project would be ready by 2023 making way for faster movement of vessels. Jalamarga Vikas project is mainly catering to the bulk and heavy industrial cargo, which helps the big industries and large corporate houses. Keeping this in mind, the Jalamarga Vikas project too was launched completely dedicated to common people, small traders, local businesses and local people in general. The Inland Waterways Authority of India is constructing more than 60 community jetties on National Waterways 1 for the benefit of around 7.5 crore people living on the banks of River Ganga in the states of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand and West Bengal. These community jetties are expected to infuse economic activity in this entire belt, resulting in massive employment generation and overall growth for the locals. In order to leverage the potential of River Brahmaputra, 891 km long National Waterways 2 from Sadia in Arunachal Pradesh to Dhubri in Assam, connecting Indo-Bangladesh protocol route was made navigable. Work on NW2 started in 2015 with the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi embarking on an ambitious Sagar Mala project which aims at linking the entire country with the global market through Sagarmala and connecting the hinterland through waterways. For a distance of 255 km were flagged off, resulting in avoiding about 300 km of road travel reducing logistics cost and carbon footprint. NW2 
has four differential global positioning system stations for safe navigation dhubri jogi ghopa bishwanath ghat and dibrugarh and 12 floating terminals hatsingimari jogi ghopa tezpur silghat bishwanath ghat niyamati singajan bogibel saikhoa dibrugarh oriam ghat and sadia for movement of specialized cargo cement timber tea coffee oil coal rubber pineapple etc movement of goods through waterways from dibrugarh to kolkata started in 1844 but was stopped half a century back and has now started again with a new initiative which even facilitates oversize and overweight cargo movement from kolkata companies like ntpc nhpc power grid and nipco require heavy and oversized cargo and only waterways could transport those special cargo and nw2 on river brahmaputra have been a big help for them national waterway 2 will not only connect the northeastern region with haldia and kolkata ports and the hinterland through the indo bangladesh protocol route by overcoming the most difficult and treacherous road and rail link exim cargo movement from landlocked country bhutan has also made access to the sea through indo bangladesh protocol route through national waterway 2 pandu has been developed as a multimodal inland water transport terminal equipped with various cargo handling facilities transit sheds open space hard stands and many more rupees 100 crore has been invested for construction of low level reinforced cement concrete jetty along with a high level rcc jetty for round the year loading and unloading of cargo and railway bg siding the first ever dry docking repair facility of the vessels in the northeastern region is also coming up in pandu with proposed investment of rupees 208 crore under phase 1 presently vessels in this region are ferried to kolkata for dry docking repair for seamless movement of cargo a dedicated corridor is planned to connect pandu port with the national highway with a proposed investment of rupees 180 crore a permanent roro terminal at dhubri has been constructed by investing 46.69 crore rupees a temporary roro service between dhubri and hatsingimari has been started roro service provides direct link between assam and meghalaya states avoiding circuitous road routes of 220 kilometers roro terminals are also proposed at hatsingimari niyamati kamalwadi and maijan dibrugarh to singajan iwai has given roro and ro packs vessels to government of assam to facilitate movement of passengers and cargo the lives of 144 villages and 150000 people of majuli in assam largest river island in india has changed forever with the launching of roro and ro packs services mv sachin dev barman and mv rani gaidenlu has reduced the travel time between majuli island to nimati to just 12 km from 400 km Northeastern India is strategically located as it connects and offers huge opportunities of trade with the vast markets of Myanmar, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, Singapore, Philippines, Indonesia and other East Asian countries and the act east policy of the government is aimed at capitalizing that opportunity by developing a cheaper, convenient and safe mode of transport. The Eastern Waterways Connectivity transport grid for regional connectivity with bangladesh nepal bhutan and myanmar will be strengthened to effective regional trade cooperation main thrust is to develop waterways to connect all northeastern states with the mainland ports kolkata haldia through coastal shipping in developing northeast as a new economic and financial hub for the entire bbi and region that is Bangladesh, Bhutan, India and Nepal. The entire region has natural gas reserves of 190 billion cubic meters, coal reserves of over 900 million tons and oil reserves of over 500 million tons. Large limestone reserves of around 5000 million tons and a forest cover that is 25% of the country's total forest area. 
the Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways is working day and night to connect the inland waterways with the coastal waterways so that trade and commerce by reducing the logistic costs can be made available to all parts of the country and our neighboring nation. IWAI has its own footprint in South India, which starts with the West Coast Canal or National Waterway 3, a 205 km stretch running from Kollam to Kotapuram. Including Champakara and Udyogamandal canals are also navigable and connects the industrial corridor of Kochi to Kochi port. This is the first national waterway in the country, having 24-hour navigation facilities along the entire stretch. The Roro service in Kochi has made life easy for the truckers moving towards the International Container Transshipment Terminal, Ballarapadam to Willington Island, by ensuring free-flowing traffic. Roro vessels, MV Adi Shankara and MV CV Raman, are procured from Cochin Shipyard Limited under Make in India scheme having the carrying capacity of 300 tons of goods, a dozen heavy vehicles. MV Adi Sankara and MV CV Raman are deployed to reduce the burden on this road in particular to connect the port with waterways between Willingdon Island and Bolgati Roro jetties. These two Roro vessels have been handed over to the Kerala Shipping and Inland Navigation Corporation, Government of Kerala, to facilitate movement of passenger and cargo. The NW4 runs along the Koromandal coast through Kakinada, Eluru, Kumanur, Buckingham Canal and also through part of Krishna and Godavari rivers in South India. The canal section of NW4 is formed by a combination of Kakinada Canal, the Eluru Canal, Kumanur Canal and Buckingham Canal. The Kakinada Canal runs between Kakinada and Rajamundri for a length of 50 kilometers. Goa has well-developed ferry boats to transport people from one bank to another across the rivers. These ferry boats laid the foundation of inland waterways in Goa, which still continues. Goa has many rivers and all of those flow out of the Western Ghat and flow into the Arabian Sea. Floating jetty in Panaji was introduced recently and two similar jetties are coming up in the state. River Information System is being planned for Vessel Movement and NWS, NTCPWC and IIT Madras is preparing DPR. The National Waterway 111 is to be developed on the Zuari River, the largest river in Goa. The National Waterway 68 on Mandovi River is considered the lifeline of the state and the National Waterway 27 on Kambarjua Canal. All the three national waterways are operational and IWAI plan to upgrade and maintain those for carrying both passengers and cargo across the state. The financial capital of India, Mumbai, is badly hit by traffic congestion and snarls. IWAI has identified 12 inland waterway routes to connect Vasai, Kalyan, Thane and Navi Mumbai which would serve as low-cost urban transport service leading to end congestion and snarls on Mumbai roads and would also help in development of the region. The Kaladan project was conceived and aimed at accelerating infrastructure and economic development in India and Myanmar. The project includes the construction of a deep water port at the mouth of the Kaladan River in Sitwe, dredging of the river to enable cargo vessels to navigate the river from Sitwe to Paletwa in Myanmar, construction of a river port at Paletwa in Myanmar's Chin state and construction of highways from Paletwa to Maikwa on the Indo-Myanmar border. India and Bangladesh have a common history and have been close allies since the creation of Bangladesh in 1971 and both the nations have strong trading and economic relationships. Realizing the global socio-economic dynamics, both the nations have decided to further strengthen bilateral economic collaboration, giving boost to the bilateral trade utilizing the existing trade routes, developing cheaper, environment-friendly all-weather modes of transportation of goods and passengers. 
the inland water transit and trade protocol between India and Bangladesh allows inland vessels of one country to transit through the specified routes of the other country. These protocol routes are Kolkata to Silkhat and vice versa. 1,720 kilometers Kolkata to Karimganj, Badarpur and vice versa. 1,339 kilometers Dhulia to Aricha and vice versa. 270 kilometers Silkhat to Karimganj, Badarpur and vice versa. 1,437 kilometers and Sunamura to Daud Kandi and vice versa. 93 kilometers. Both the nations have 11 designated and declared ports of call and two declared extended ports of call on each side, India. Kolkata, Haldia, Dhubri, Pandu, Silkhat, Karimganj, Dhulia, Maya, Kolaghat, Sunamura, Jogi Ghopa, Triveni and Badarpur. While in Bangladesh side, Narayanganj, Khulna, Mongala, Sirajganj, Ashuganj, Pangaon, Rajshahi, Sultanganj, Chilmari. Dodkandi, Bahadurabad, Ghodasal and Mukhtarpur. Out of total 2,704 km navigable route, India has 869 km, while Bangladesh has 1,835 km share. Advent of waterways have rekindled the scope of cruise tourism and national waterways 1, 2 and 3 especially. These cruise ships have connected tourism hotspots wildlife sanctuaries, adventure locations, ecotourism, hill stations, lakes, historic monuments and glorious ghats of Varanasi. The National Inland Navigation Institute, NINI, NINI in Patna, was established to develop human resource for inland water transport sector, provides induction, upgradation and professional development training to manpower for manning, operation inland vessels and repair and maintenance as well. The institute arranges professional courses on hydrographic surveying, dredging and morphing. Making these national waterways navigable and operational will enrich local community in terms of trade and business, streamline transportation of goods and passenger, encourage tourism and help the industrial and mining units to transport bulk cargo seamlessly. This would kickstart massive economic activity in hinterland resulting in generating employment opportunity and maintain ecological and environmental balance.